Hi, everybody. It is December 21, 2017. I am sorry that this is coming very late um, after I received some donations for Harvey. Um, and I thank every person that leaves a donation. I take the email address from the PayPal record and four Four times I got delivery status notification failure and that is very upsetting to me because I don't want anybody to feel like I'm ignoring them not when they have sent a donation and unfortunately I didn't write the person's name on the first capture of that delivery status notification so there's one person that I can't say their first name, but there's a Bob and a Courtney that the email address I tried several times and it didn't go through. Only one did I know from YouTube because it was the same name. Very often people who have usernames on YouTube have, they don't use their real name, so I can't match them up. But I hope you see this video and I hope that you don't feel that I was ignoring you and I apologize for not getting this video up sooner but things have gone on and I will tell you flat out I am having a very very difficult time keeping up with an awful lot in my life just keeping up with emails responding to emails I apologize to those that I have not responded to. Um, yeah, I absolutely feel like my brain has gotten worse. So I also want to address comments. And one comment came in that, all right, the initial comment which was soon after I asked for donations to help a subscriber friend in Houston whose home was flooded from the deliberate release of the reservoirs not from Harvey but in asking for those donations for that particular subscriber I got a comment from a long time subscriber. Long, I believe, a subscriber since my original Kafka Winston World channel. And the comment read something like, and this was back on Kafka Winston World, so I didn't screen capture that comment, but it read, My son donated $100 on my behalf and you didn't acknowledge it. Now, I'm very careful to acknowledge everybody's donations and when I saw that I was really surprised, a bit upset and I thought, you know, I I didn't know the son's name. I left a response asking for the son's name so I could check it out on PayPal. No response to me. I didn't get the son's name. Another comment came in and I asked that subscriber again, could you please give me your son's name because I do want to acknowledge and thank your son for donating. But at that point I already knew that there was no, there was no donation from that subscriber because I only got one $100 donation and I had thanked that person and that person had then responded to my email thanking him. But I asked for the son's name. I was ignored again. Then I got this comment. Now, I also just want to preface this by saying I started getting comments from long-time subscribers and it was sudden 
and there was a turn, and the comments read mean, hostile, angry, and it had with this subscriber. And I do believe that it came after I posted videos on Kafka Winston World. I'm reading the Bible. Christians, it says very clearly, lying is an abomination. After I started posting those videos, there were an awful lot of Christians who were rather upset with my asking, how could it be that here, clear in the Bible, you don't have to spend years trying to interpret what that means. Lying is an abomination. That's what God said about lying. Clear on its face. And yet, I have run across so many Christians who lie, don't take responsibility for it. When called out, they lie again. And then you get attacked by them. So I was just asking the simple question. How is it that Christian, Christians can do this? And very often I would get the comment, well, we all sin. And then I posted another video saying, you know, it's very clear in the Bible. Jesus says, I forgive you of your sins. So how many Christians? Yeah, we're forgiven of our sins. But they don't really talk too much about that second part, you know, where Jesus says, sin, I forgive you of your sin, go, but sin no more. That's clear too, on its face, not complicated, but sin no more, which means that one has to work on themselves to sin no more. So if they lie and they're called out, you're caught, why lie again? Why don't you take responsibility for the lie? and clean up your lying. Because I think, well, you might hear in my response to this comment. Let me read it. And it came from, I don't know, just a video that I had posted on Kafka Winston World, but it did not address my question about asking her for her son's name so I could check the record on PayPal. She writes, do you get what you are speaking? Sickness. I see what it is. I quit owning all that's wrong with this world some years ago, beginning with my family of origin. Lost a marriage before I came to really see. Even now, still coming to see. Welcome to the age of Aquarius, Carol. I really hope you choose to care to desire a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Before that comment, I was getting comments from that subscriber. Your intellect is not going to save you, Carol. The only thing that's going to save you is Jesus Christ. And you need to get on board, essentially. Um, I always find it fascinating that people, and there's an awful lot of Christians who do this, you got to believe what they believe. You got to get on their board, which, you know, I'm not forcing any of you to believe what I believe, but I write back, did you ever respond to my asking you about the donation? I stopped going back to check. I finally get a response. I'm not ignored. Good. I did ask my son about it. The channel did not take it at the time, so he canceled it. Sorry. Well, this was my response. PayPal does not register your son's donation or its cancellation. Clearly, someone is not telling the truth. I'm sorry that you felt it unnecessary to answer my questions before this in regards to your comment that I never acknowledged your son's donation of $100. Either you or your son is lying about donating. You really need to take a look at yourself and stop telling me 
I need a personal relationship with Jesus. It is you who needs to ask yourself if your personal relationship with Jesus is genuine or is it one based on false belief of having one. I do hope you think twice about trying to shame someone else for any reason, but lying to shame someone, you are one of many. There's a reason why the Bible states clearly lying is an abomination. Remember, the road is narrow and that Jesus will say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work inequity. I'd say you Christians really need to think seriously about what you do, how you live, and if you really are among the few on that narrow road. Jesus will say, I never knew you. Depart from me, because when you lie, you have a false self. If you can't be honest in life, then you're not being real. And if you're not real, no one knows you, not even Jesus. So I've had people lie about donating, which has always been, you know, why do people do this? Now, I have always tried to figure out liars, outright lying. And there are many simple reasons. They just want to um, appear to be something that they're not, or they want to manipulate somebody into doing something, or they um, lie to uh, preserve their integrity, which they don't have because they lie. Um, they're out to protect themselves. They don't want to get caught in something. Or they just have an agenda. But, so somebody who lies about donating, when they do it in their real life with somebody and they just tell that lie to somebody, well, they're trying to present as someone that they're not. In the cyber world, though, you leave comments that you donated when you didn't, this person, as far as I'm concerned, did it to shame me. Clearly, this person is angry and got angry at me for some reason and wanted to shame me. You know, I'm really tired of these Christians who force their belief onto other people have so many issues themselves. They never do any work on themselves and they hurt other people and they don't care. But they think that everybody has to believe as they believe. And they actually think that Jesus is going to be lifting them up and bringing them into eternal bliss. It's a narrow road. I never hear about Christians talking about that narrow road. I never hear Christians saying, Jesus, I wonder if I'm on that narrow road. I don't hear them ever talking about they wondering if they are on that narrow road. Which means few get into that place of eternal bliss. Few. So when we have a country that is, well, ostensibly 324 million, and we still have a large majority of our population who declare themselves as Christians, do you really think you're all getting in? Don't you wonder who is going to be getting in? Don't you wonder what makes you so special that Jesus is going to tap your shoulder and say, come on? Because I would if I had those beliefs.
I have said before that if we were a Christian nation with even the majority of Christians who were real Christians and tried to emulate Christ's life as best they could, we would never have manifested so much evil. But we have. Doesn't that make you wonder? How is it that so many people claim that they are Christian and in the 90s, 1990s, it was 90% Christian. 90% of Americans declared that they were Christian. That was the time when all the politicians who were running for office had to declare themselves Christian openly, publicly. Now, well, things have changed radically. And now I think the statistics is 73% declare themselves as Christian. So you're still a majority. How do you match this up with such a cold, lying people? How do you match it up with so many people who live a pretense? How do you match it up with so many who are homeless? So many are suffering. More and more are suffering. More and more are really experiencing life in a way they never ever imagined that they would. How do you match up a Christian nation with the majority of the people of that nation declaring themselves as Christian when you have about a million children who live in cars, who don't have their own home? How do you claim to be a Christian nation when you have more and more and more people going homeless? And when you have laws passed that say you'll be arrested and fined if you feed the homeless. Because the two do not match. They don't gel. How do you have a Christian company, Hobby Lobby, and I got this email from a subscriber yesterday. Carol, I write you because I feel like you are a part of my daily life, YouTube videos. I have no TV and have not for a year, cannot afford it. I took care of my mother for over four years. She passed away a year and a half ago. I have two brothers that abandoned her. Now they are taking issue of her house to court waiting on the hearing date will be auctioned off. I have fibromyalgia and arthritis, depression, anxiety in my 50s alone on disability and struggling. Live month to month. You were talking about corporations and how nobody cares about anybody anymore. So true. Finally got a job at the so-called Christian company Hobby Lobby just two weeks ago. The manager said his store is the highest volume store in the southeast and in one week their sales were, I don't know, 200,000. Yesterday, I was told the home office said to get rid of all seasonal people. I have bills, thought I was going to get a little caught up. Now I have to look for another job right at Christmas. Hobby Lobby, a Christian company? Ha, far from it. I'm not feeling good, sensitive to chemicals and electromagnetic frequencies. Not only that sad, extremely depressed and just tired, not only that, but sad, depressed. I know I am not alone. Christmas to me is so painful. How could Christ possibly want it to be like this? A Christian company makes me sick. You're a hundred percent correct. Nobody does care and that is very sad.
lot of Christians live a delusion. You know, I also get <clears throat> comments from um, here. You are missing the big picture. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. God will destroy this world upon the return of Jesus Christ. This stuff has to happen. This is another comment. This stuff has to happen. It says so in the Bible. All of this is going to happen. And no matter what we do or try to do, it's never going to stop it. It has to happen for Jesus to come back. Wow. Wow. We have to have children suffering, the elderly suffering. More and more people to suffer before Jesus will come back. Really? Doesn't sound like Jesus to me. Doesn't sound like God. A whole lot of people, God is going to come and he's going to restore goodness. This has to be. It's prophesied in the Bible. Relax. Relax. Turn your life over to Jesus Christ. Sit back like most of us. Do nothing. Let the evil spread. Hallelujah! Jesus is going to be returning soon. Another subscriber. Hi, Carol. I just wanted to say hi. You seriously aren't going to believe what I've been going through. After finally getting my stomach manageable, she had emergency surgery not too long ago. My kids brought a horrific flu home, so for the past five days, I've had a flu so bad. The last time I remember being this sick with the flu, I lived in Oregon, and I was 12. After last time we talked, I felt like maybe I was going to be able to pull off working enough to pay my last overdue bill and then get the kids something for Christmas. Well, do you ever feel like you just can't win? So, it will be another crappy situation with nothing for them, and I never was able to get them a tree. My girls love decorating a tree each year. I just can't believe it. I haven't had the flu in like 20 years, but of course, I get it. Why is it that it seems like us, the people that truly care about other people and are good people that always do the right thing, are the ones that seem to struggle the most or have the most obstacles to overcome? This is a subscriber who lost her job, got laid off, that corporate job, could not find another job that was comparable to the one she had. Bills started to pile up. Medical issues sensitive to the frequencies. When you don't get any help, things get worse and worse and worse. This is a subscriber who has her parents who live not far. The malignant narcissist. The grandparents that won't even help the grandchildren. And this I see happening more and more to many of my subscribers. So I've posted videos asking for donations, a dollar, five dollars, and I'll get maybe ten, ten. It's like maybe two percent of the views on that video. But I get a lot of Christians saying they'll pray. 
a dollar or five dollars. They can't afford it. Connect the dots, it's demonic powers. Aliens is the deception all designed to control your mind. Wear the full armor of God. Accept the gift of everlasting life by grace and Jesus' sacrifice. You can't buy salvation by yourself. Peace. Go the rest of the way and seek the peace that is in Yeshua. Kingdoms will pass away, but his word will not pass away. They are feeding off your anger and frustration. They want you that way because they have the power and won't relinquish it until the Messiah comes to rule on this earth once again. So let's just sit back and let everybody suffer more and more. Let's not help one another. Let's just let everybody suffer because Jesus is returning. Right? People claim to be Christian that would not help or would stand behind any laws like this simply are not real Christians. And I believe that was one of the videos that I posted on these homeless laws that really, really reflect that we are not a Christian nation. But then writes, don't lump us true Christians that live as Christ has taught us to live in with the fake Christians who do not. I don't. I got a, I got a comment and it was on a Kafka Winston World video from a subscriber who had been a subscriber for a while and I was shocked. The comment read something like, you know, I, I agree with everything that you're saying. My only beef with you is that you hate Christians and that you think they're evil. Wow. So I hate my f new friend here in Anderson, South Carolina. I hate her, really. And I hate all of the subscribers that I talk to who are Christian. That's why I keep talking to them, because I hate them, right? And I think they're evil, yeah. I spend time with evil people for the hell of it. You know, people hear what clearly they want to hear or hear what is not being said. They conjure up these facts in their own mind and then they leave them in the comment section. A presumption that they have made, they've conjured up this little thing in their head and then they leave it for all to see and what they have done is lie you lied about me I don't like that you know it's funny for those who know some of my experiences, many of my subscribers that are new, you don't know what I have lived. I've lived trying to survive a family that is so malignantly narcissistic. I'm the scapegoat. My entire family they're waiting for that call. Somebody to tell them that I'm dead. They have destroyed my life. Now, people can do that. We're seeing it. We see it all the time. People in government, people in military, they destroy people's lives. But when you talk about your own personal experience, with your own family that has destroyed your life. People don't want to believe that. 
It's interesting. They've destroyed my reputation, my mother, with her, her lies. So yeah, I really have a problem with lying. I see how unbelievably destructive is any lie, any lie, even if you're lying for a good reason. Because what you do is destroy trust. And when you destroy trust, then you have no relationship. You don't have anything real. You're not building anything strong. You're not building anything good. It's only trusting relationships that can do that. So I do have a real problem with it. I'm sorry that not everyone has a real problem with it. But since the real total destruction came about several years ago when I hit South Carolina. I've literally been hanging on every single day. That's why Kafka Winston World was so important. It was the only thing that I had that really kind of revealed my existence in the world. Never Lose Truth does too, but but that I had 40,000 subscribers. Now, I don't, I don't look at the numbers. I don't care about the numbers. But it was important because I knew it pissed my family off. It represented something. It represented just a little bit of success. What they've been trying to destroy to make sure that I never succeed again, to make sure that I never get on my feet again. And they have been successful. Took them a long time, 15 years, but so. And it represented me who I am, the good and the bad, yeah, the frustration, the anger. So when it went down, it was hard, very hard to take, because it was really the last thing that I had left. It was very hard to see how many of those Christian subscribers that love me never contacted me at all. Some knew how important that channel was. They didn't care. That hurt a lot. But it's so funny to me because I have been really hanging on and every single day I think, how the hell can I get my reputation back? How can I get my life back? How can I, you know, how can I overcome the destruction of my own family? But how can I restore my integrity? How can I, because they took it all away. Everything I worked for, Everything I accomplished, everything gone with their lies, and they have left me with nothing. And I don't want to go into the particulars about that. So every day, I haven't lived, I've hung on, wanting somehow to get out from under their lies. And the longer I've stayed on YouTube, the more I've seen 
I can't get out from under so many of your lies. Those who I have met since I left Great Barrington, Massachusetts, the Christians who have lied to me, lied about me, played me, And I realized that yes, we are a very sick people. And so many lie. And then when you do call them out, they can become vicious and they trap you in all of this crazy gaslighting crap. And it would be so simple if they just said, you know what, you're right. Let me take a look at it. But no. And the last close friend I had did such a number on me that now I'm not even sure how to trust, you know, I'm not some neurotic and I won't, you know, I'm not going to ever trust anyone again. I've always been, which is pretty remarkable considering I've lived lies for 59 years. And yet every person that I have met along the way, I just trust them until they break that trust. So it's almost I, I automatically extend a trust. Those who have been close in my life, they have been the hardest to deal with. They are the ones that really hurt and then you watch them, they become just like your family. They start pulling the same. But they're Christian, right? Lying is an abomination. Sin, yeah, Jesus forgives you. But he says very clearly, go, but sin no more. Which means you gotta work on yourself. You gotta stop. those behaviors that clearly are immoral, hurtful of other people, but that entails doing work, the hard work. We're all here, you know, so many, actually you call yourself a truther? What does it mean if you're not looking at your personal truth, because truth is not selective. It's not. So, you know, then I'll get comments from people, by the way, I've not been able to <laughs> restore anything. And yeah, when I'm gone, and eventually I will be, I'm now left not only with the sick feeling that the lies that my mother has told, that my older brother and sister just accept, they know it's a lie, but they go along with mommy. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want your life to be so trashed. And when your life does get so destroyed and your own family, your own mother is so vicious that she will do anything to make sure 
that you are alone, that you do suffer, and when you're dead, If you kill yourself, that would be great because her lie is that I'm a violent, mentally ill drunk. I don't drink, I'm not mentally ill, and I am not violent. You lie to me and you lie again, you don't take responsibility for it, you start playing me, you start gaslighting me, you will see how angry I can get. And I can get really angry, but violent? No. That is a form of violence, but physical? That's what my mother claims. My family, my mother is extremely violent. But this is what I have to live. And any of you who know the malignant narcissist, you know what they can do. And you know that they were lying about you way before you even knew. So you get trapped in the lie. And then you try to defend yourself and you ain't got one. There's no way to defend yourself. And then you have these YouTubers subscribers end up doing the same thing to you? Really? And they're Christians. So no. Now I actually do worry. But mostly now I just don't give a shit. Say what you're gonna say. And there will be lies, as there are in the comments section. It really hurts to have people lie about who you are, especially when your life has already been destroyed. By the lies that your family has told. Who does this? Christians? Really? So no, there's no way that I can get out from under these lies. Not from a lot of people on YouTube, not from my family. You see, we have a very, very sick people and it's not just the sleeping people. It's also a lot of the awake crowd because they don't take a look at themselves. They're comfortable. We've become a society where friendship means nothing, trust means nothing. You can throw people away easily. Why bother to take responsibility for what I've done? Let me just defend my ego and I'll trash you in the process. I'm tired of it. If it was one person, fine. It's not one person. I don't understand this. I don't understand how anybody could be thinking that Jesus is going to be taking you. I don't understand how anybody could possibly think that you are on the narrow road when you throw out lies about somebody in a damning, shaming way and you tell me I have to get a relationship with Jesus. Frankly, I do have a relationship with Jesus and you know what? It is real. It's real. I'll never call myself a Christian and Jesus, well, my birthday's Christmas Eve. I've hung out with Jesus many, many years because I've been alone on my birthday a whole lot. So I often think about Jesus. 
we have conversations. I don't care if he's a myth or a story or real, doesn't. He is by far the greatest example for all of us to follow, to emulate. Christians in my life, in real life, I've yet to meet one who actually tries, tries to emulate the life of Christ. You can't call yourself a Christian. Claim that you are a Christian and not try on a daily basis to emulate the life of Christ the best you can. You cannot call yourself a Christian and continue to lie. And you, know, <clears throat> you can't, you know, what is this? Well, we're all sinners, so we just get to sin, and then we repent and ask for forgiveness. But you don't work on trying to not sin anymore, really? You know, if we were a Christian nation with real Christians, this nation would have been incredible. This nation would have been so loving and caring and compassionate. So what went wrong? Yeah, I'm really tired of Christians who seem to uh, think that they are above everyone else and yet you display such a low level of consciousness most of you most of you not all of you do I hate Christians no I love the Christian who works on themselves I love the Christians who take seriously their Christianity. I have such great respect for them. This kind of stuff? Sorry. Here, if Carol would turn her life, worries, and frustrations over to our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ, she wouldn't sound so hopeless and helpless and condescending to her brothers and sisters who are the born-again true believers in Jesus Christ, the true biblical Christians. Many of us have tried reaching out to her, but she seems to prefer believing the New Age movement, higher level of consciousness. This is a Christian who doesn't, who literally believes that there's, what, one level of consciousness? Really? First of all, New Age, early 80s, when I would go to listen to all of these gurus in Manhattan. And again, I'm forgetting, wow, my brain. But yeah, I'd listen to them and I'd go, this doesn't sound right. This sounds like you're on a path of self-centeredness and you're developing a philosophy to justify your selfishness, your greed, your self-centeredness. Let me stick a, a, a sticky or yellow, a yellow sticky on my bathroom window to remind myself to say, I love me, I love me. It made me sick. The spiritual road is so unbelievably difficult. It absolutely requires a stripping of the ego, stripping of the pretense that so many Americans live, are trapped in, including Christians. It means getting rigorously honest. It means living honestly. So no, new age, that was a very, very long time ago that I couldn't stand it. And yeah, 
even with my new age friends, having discussions with them. I just couldn't get it. I just didn't get it. Yeah. I'm hopeless and helpless because I don't see anybody changing. And I fully get, and it is the truth, that if we are ma uh, to manifest any kind of positive change, we have to change. The individual has to change. But nobody cares to do any of that kind of work. Not from what I see. Except for one person. Everyone else? They'd rather trash you than change themselves. I'm hopeless and helpless. because of a circumstance that I've not been able to change. Turn your worries and frustrations over to the Heavenly Father. So many people, what? I don't want to say anybody's name, but Interesting. Well, if you would just do this, if you would just do what I do, then you would feel great because I've turned everything over to the Heavenly Father. If it wasn't for my being born again and saved, I would never have made it through. So you can do it too. Do you know what circumstances I live? No. When people say that, I have to wonder, perhaps your road has been easier. You know, when people are comfortable, when their life is not squeezing every bit of ounce out of them, it's easy to believe. You don't know what I have lived. And I can guarantee you, I have not lived what you live. I guarantee you that most of you will never live what I have lived. And even saying that, I have no doubt people are going to judge me. You know, it's like you say a few things to somebody and they think that your experience is their experience and oh, you had a malignantly narcissistic mother, so did I. Well, let me tell you about my experience, as if it's my experience. Yeah, anybody who has a malignantly narcissistic mother, you've had a hard road. But it's the details of everybody's life, and some details differ. And those differences need to be respected. But I haven't really found that too much. with those who have had malignantly narcissistic families, mothers. I will hear judgment from somebody. That if I would just do what they did, then I'd be fine. They still have their home. They actually relate to me as if my experience has been their experience and then I find out that their mother is calling them, they go visit them for the holidays, they still have family connections with, well some of them, with every person in their family. They're still living their relative comfort. Um, I live alone. I have no one at my back. 
My family wants me dead. I never, ever hear from them. Ever. And I could go on and on and on. I'm living in an area I can't create a life. I have lost every resource I had in which I found joy. I don't have the, hey, let me pick up the phone and call a friend and just say, let's go out for a drive and let's do this and let's do that. I don't have that in my life. I eat alone every meal. I'm alone 98% of the time. I have no comfort. I sit in this chair. I sleep on an airbed. I live as if I'm living in a hotel room. I've been hanging on, doing the best that I can every single day. And you can make all of your judgments about what I'm saying now, but understand their judgments. Because what you need to do is understand the details of somebody's life. And if you don't know those details, and you think I might be saying something that you either identify with or I'm saying something that, all right, maybe there's a difference here to my experience. Find out what the difference is if you're interested. And if not, that's okay. But don't make your judgment. And I'm saying this not for me. I'm saying this because people have to change. And when somebody gets so bro broken and beat down, it's very easy. to beat them down further. By you thinking that, well, if you just did what I did, if you just turned all of those worries and frustrations over to the Heavenly Father, you would be what? What? If you just prayed, I guess, right, right? Because I have prayed and I've wanted I have so wanted to have that solace that I read or hear from Christians that don't feel alone. I'm completely alone. I'm scared. It's painful having your whole family hate you so much that they want you dead. And you never get invited anywhere. You have no connection to anything. You have no roots. You've got nothing. You don't exist. And then you start thinking, Jesus, when I die, wow, the state is going to be taking care of my remains. The state, whatever state I happen to be in. How did my life get like this? Hell, I graduated Smith College. I went to law school. I practiced law. How does it happen that suddenly you're driving, you're homeless, you're living in your car? How does that happen? You do need an awful lot of help to get there. And guess what? A severely, violently malignantly narcissistic mother can get you there when you need help when you've had a stroke and you don't get the help you don't get anybody in your family to even ask you how are you doing they want to destroy you so I've managed to survive them 15 years But it has been very hard to find out from subscribers how many 
they too lie. Knowing, knowing my life was destroyed by lies, but it didn't matter to them. They lied too. One, I begged, I screamed, because I so wanted that friendship. Nothing. Christian. Um, we all have different experiences. If there is a God up there micromanaging lives, which I do not believe, but if there is, then God knows God knows what I have lived for 59 years. And if that is the God that's up there, he fully understands me and he knows me. Jesus knows me. Because I don't lie. And I am so not perfect. I would donate if I could. We're living in the last days according to the Bible, which is why many people are in such poor shape spiritually and emotionally. No, many people are in such poor shape spiritually because they have so many delusions that they have to work out in their own brain. They're in poor shape spiritually because they have never ever done the work necessary to get get their spirit strengthened. They have never take a, a look in the mirror, done that self-reflective work that's really painful. They've never questioned their beliefs. They've never reevaluated those beliefs. They've never asked themselves, why do I have this belief? Where did it come from? Is it my belief? Or was it just the belief that I kind of got indoctrinated in due to the adults around me as a child? Did I get influenced by those adults? Or is it truly my belief? Because I will tell you that in my many relationships with Christians, they don't go there. They just have adopted beliefs of somebody else. They go to church. There's no difference between them and the robots walking around because the effect is the same. You know, yeah, there are so many people who, God forbid, I don't say a spiritual war, but I say a war. It's a spiritual war. Okay, I get it. Capital letters. I get it. I get that. I've got, I had <laughs> for a very long time known it is a spiritual war between good and evil. And you know what? War means we got to be soldiers in that war. And it means that we've got to fight the evil. But if the evil is within ourselves, if we're supporting the evil, as many Christians do, they support it by getting the paycheck from whatever. Are they working in the telecommunications industry? Are they putting up cell phone towers? Are they teaching in our, uh, our nation's children? Are they allowing these children to get destroyed by the Wi-Fi in the, in the classrooms? Are they a part of dumbing them down? 
with a communist curriculum, but they get their paycheck and they live their comfortable lives that are part of evil. And until they do the work necessary to extract themselves from that, they'll always be on the side of evil. They will not be that good soldier for God or Christ. No, I do not believe that just because it's prophesied in the Bible and so many of you believe that Christ is coming back, that you can sit back and do nothing and let more and more people suffer. Not only people, but four-leggeds all life. No, I'm sorry. And what does it say about all of you who have that belief? while so many in your own community are hurting. And I can guarantee you, the majority of you do nothing, nothing to help them. And in fact, because you are the majority, still, I bet so many of you, and I'm not talking to you, uh, that's the general you, so many Christian mothers and fathers don't do a thing to help their own daughters and sons. They let them go homeless. They let them hurt. They let them suffer. And it's sickening. And I will not, I will not pretend like I don't see it. You're a false Christian. You know, I get these comments from other Christians who say, get your house in order. What does that mean, get your house in order? Does it, what does it mean? Because in my mind it means, get your house, your soul, your spiritual walk in order. And that means, first and foremost, you live honestly, you speak honestly, you care about those things that are most important in life. Trust in your relationships. That you don't shame people deliberately because you're upset with something that they said. That when you say something, you honor your word. You honor your word. Which means you have to know who you are. and means that you have to be aware of what you are speaking. Which means what you speak and what you do matches. It matches. It gels that you don't just speak good things about yourself and then live in a way that does not honor those words. You don't talk good games about yourself. Yeah, I'm tired of Christians beating me down. And I have so much respect for all of you who are real, who don't lie, who actually do try to emulate Christ. And you know what? <laughs> that's why most Christians don't, because that's hard. Oof, that's hard. Emulate Christ's life the best I can. Oof. But if you did it, if you were real Christians, what a ripple effect that would have. Let's say you started on the right foot tomorrow and you consciously tried to emulate Christ, which meant 
that every time you heard yourself, oh, just about to lie, you didn't. You stopped yourself. And you spoke honestly. And in this culture of ours, this Christian nation of ours, doing that is really hard. Really hard. Because we're not a Christian nation. We're a mean, cold, heartless nation. And we throw people away, left and right. And we don't care. Really, what happens to anybody? And that's the truth. Very few genuinely care. Very few actually feel another's suffering. And in order to get there, you got to take a look at yourself. So if I'm talking to you and you're upset right now with me, ask yourself why you're upset. Because I might be, you know, touching a chord. But I bet there's a lot of you who are not upset with me. And you actually agree. You know, kind of like... Uh, Hypocrisy and lies are rampant in Western Christianity. In my humble opinion, this is because Western Christians are trying to serve two masters. Money, 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 money. Ego, 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 your own. So when I talk about raising your level of consciousness, it's not about new age. It is about you doing the work necessary so that you can raise that consciousness of yours, get out of that ego-driven consciousness, the low level, you're walking the low road, get out of that. But you got to do that hard work, facing yourself in the mirror, cleaning your own self up, getting your house in order. And it's hard. It's hard to say, oh my God, I was full of shit. But when you get that it's absolutely necessary, if you actually do want to do something to make this world a little better, you know it's required. You can do it. And you know it's great. You don't have to protect your ego anymore. What's great about it is that you can really be honest. And yeah, you do every now and then think to yourself, Jesus, your entire life, it's been trashed. And you will die without anybody really caring. Now, eventually I'll be gone from here and I'll just be another YouTuber that you might remember every now and then. But the way my life has gone, no, I can't go back to those friends, those liberal progressive friends. I've moved beyond it. I've grown beyond it. It's not there for me anymore. But where do I belong? I don't belong in AA anymore because I can't stand being around people who are... I don't know what they are. TV robots can't talk to them about anything real. Many of us are alone now, and it's very, very difficult. So,
You know, I think when I had a life, <laughs> everything was so much easier. Even when it was hard, it was so much easier. So, yeah, I'm tired of listening to people say, you know, it's okay to have some joy sometimes when they have had, when they have everything <laughs> still. Or how about those who say, you need to work on your gratitude. That's like going up to somebody who's living on the street. You need to work on your gratitude. So many don't know what it's like to literally have a glass, but it's not half full or half empty. There's a drop in it. You hang on to life. You can't get back anything. You don't have the health to do it. The stroke affected your ability to think. So many of you think that just because I'm talking, I'm fine. Because I'm hardwired for this. I called my mother. When you don't have anybody, <laughs> I called my mother, what, five years ago? Telling her what I told her periodically since 2002 when I had the stroke. If I don't get help, I'm not going to make it. And she said, my movers are here. I have to go. Never heard from her again. So when your life empties out and you have lost all the resources that you once had to keep going, to sustain yourself, to make yourself feel better, I've lost it, I haven't had it since 2012 from Great Barrington, Massachusetts. You get worse the stress you can't get out of. I probably should have killed myself years ago because now it just feels like I've gotten myself into, you know, what, how, how do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do this every day? I do think it's important to hear from people who have had a different experience. I think it's important. Not so much for me, but for anybody else that you're going to be judging along the way. I've gone on too long, and I'm sorry for that, but you know what? I know that a lot of you out there are really hurting. And I don't know what to tell you. Friends are not friends anymore. And that's not to say anything about the people that I have in my life. I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm talking about those that I have encountered.
Now it's easy. to just discard people and there isn't much care in this country so yeah Christians most of you you really need to get yourself in order because What you've done is not right. Even if you just started clearing up, cleaning up your own lies, you could have a, a pretty good ripple effect. Just focus on that. Lying is an abomination clear. Stop justifying your lies. Stop just claiming, well, Jesus died on the cross for us, forgives us of our sins. Start thinking about that other part. Jesus, hey, he said, go and sin no more. No. Sorry. We have been a bullshit Christian nation from the start. Let me just rape and pillage and savagely murder and rip children away from their parents in the name of Christ. And to all of those Christians out there that I talk to, that I correspond with, many of you say the same thing. So you can slam me all you want, but as far as I'm concerned, I may not call myself a Christian. God, if I'm going to be seeing God when I'm finally dead, God will know what I've lived then. And I have a lot of questions for God. And I think God will look at me and say, you did good. You did good. I know how hard it was. I know you did your best. No matter how much you were a failure in this world. I know you did your best. And Jesus will say, I knew you. And I can't say that for a whole lot of Christians. So, you can think you're all pious and righteous just because you are a Christian. It means nothing. It means nothing. If you're not doing everything to try to clean up your own act, work through those issues that you have that hurt other people, Stop lying and get out there and do what you can to fight the evil and to help those who are suffering from it. If you ain't doing any of that, sorry, you're fooling yourself.